Welcome back to Mathematics Lifeline. This is episode three of our integration practice series where I give you two integrals, you try to work them out, and then I will work them out on the board to check your answer here. So the first integral, uh, we have the integral of x cubed plus 3x squared plus 1 over x cubed plus 1. And the second one is the integral of 1 over 2 plus e to the x dx. Now notice these are both indefinite integrals, so we don't need a numerical value. We're just looking for the antiderivative. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started on these questions. You can pause the video and I will start them right now. All right, so here we have the first integral. So hopefully you were able to make some progress with this one. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started with the solution right now. So again, we're just looking for the antiderivative here. So we shouldn't have got any numbers as our answer. Um, but we want to figure out the best strategy for integrating this. Well, we know we have a few strategies for rational functions, right? A lot of the times they're going to be substitutions, or maybe you can break them up a little bit. Um, it's possible for trig subs. It's possible for partial fractions. There's a lot of options here. That's what makes these hard, because you really don't know what to start with. But in this case, substitution doesn't help us. Trig sub doesn't help us. Uh, partial fractions is going to be hard, because this does not break down very easily. But what we can do is we can actually rewrite the integral just based on what it, what it is. So you could, there's two ways we could go about this. The way I'm going to show you is going to be the faster way. You could also do polynomial long division. That's an option too, and you'll get the same answer here. Uh, but the way I'm going to break it up is let's look at it like this instead. What if we changed it to the integral of x cubed plus 1 plus 3x squared over x cubed plus 1 dx? Now, rewriting it like this, you may be able to see where I'm going, because if we just break this fraction up at this line, right, at this plus right here, what we'll have is the integral of x cubed plus 1 over x cubed plus 1 plus 3x squared over x cubed plus 1 dx. And you see that the nice thing about this is that these will actually cancel down to be 1. So we just have the integral of... 1 plus 3x squared over x cubed plus 1 dx. Now, this is where you would get if you did polynomial division, but it's actually a little bit easier, maybe a little bit faster, to split it up like this because we get rid of this automatically. These two will cancel out become 1. And so it makes this simple very, very quick. So now all we're going to do is just split up these integrals because both of these now, if we split them up, so we have the integral of 1 dx, which that one's going to be really easy, this one is plus the integral of 3x squared over x cubed plus 1 dx. Well, this integral now is, can be done using a u substitution. So we know the integral of 1 dx is just going to be x. So we'll keep that there for now. But now we're going to rewrite this in terms of u. Because if we choose u to equal x cubed plus 1, that makes du 3x squared dx. And of course, that gets rid of our numerator there, which is super nice. So we have the integral of 1 over u du when we plug in everything in terms of u. And of course, we can evaluate that. So we get x plus the natural log of the absolute value of u. And of course, u was x cubed plus 1. So we have x plus the natural log of the absolute value of x cubed plus 1. And don't forget the plus c because it is an indefinite integral. And that's it. So you may have tried a bunch of different things here and not gotten anywhere, but we can actually make this really simple just by manipulating what we have as our integrand, right? Just by knowing we can split this fraction up it is very, very helpful. So we get our answer pretty quickly that way. And, it, and it's not hard. This is a simple u sub right here. But yeah, that was it for the first question. So hopefully you did well. Hopefully you got there no matter what way you chose. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and move on to question number two right now. All right, so here's the second integral. Again, hopefully you made good progress on this whenever you tried them. Um, this one is definitely trickier. It is a tricky question, mainly because you have to actually manipulate the integrand before you can do anything with this. Because we can't really do any substitution right now. Because all we can choose as, as u would be down here in the denominator. And when we take the derivative of that, it's just going to be e to the x again. And we don't have one of those yet. So if we don't have an e to the x to cancel, u sub doesn't help us in this form that we're in. But we want an e to the x in the numerator. So in this case, what we can do is we'll just put an e to the x in the numerator. Now, of course, when we do that, it's going to completely change the function. 
So what we'll do is we'll put e to the x up here, but we're also going to need an e to the x in the denominator. And when we do this, of course, if we wanted to, we could cancel these e to the x's out, and we still have the same integral. So as long as we do it in the numerator and denominator, we don't change anything, and it's fine. So now we can try substitution. Because if we choose u to be equal to 2 plus e to the x, then of course du is going to be e to the x dx. And that's what we wanted. That gets rid of this numerator. But then again, we still have this extra factor of e to the x. But the nice thing about the u that we chose is that in here, we can just say that e to the x is equal to u minus 2 by subtracting the 2 over. And now we have something we can trade this e to the x out right here for. So what we have is the integral, e to the x dx just becomes du, so we're going to have 1 over, and then we're going to have a du out here. Now the denominator, well, we said that this was going to be u, right? So we have u times e to the x ended up being u minus 2. So it's u times u minus 2 du. And this is much nicer because now at this point, we can go ahead and break into partial fractions. So, you, you know, you still have to do the u sub and you still have to do partial fractions, but this is a much nicer integral and you'll see the partial fractions is not hard for it either. So we're going to go ahead and break off and do partial fractions over here. So we know that 1 over u times u minus 2 is going to be equal to a over u plus b over u minus 2. It's going to be our standard decomposition there. Now what we want to do is get rid of the fractions, so we're going to multiply everything by this denominator. So when we do, we're going to get 1 being equal to a times u minus 2 plus b times u. And we can go ahead and expand that out to a u minus 2a plus b u. And again, these are equal to 1. Now we're going to break it up by their powers of u. So we know we have u times a plus b. That's all the u terms together. And then we have a plus, and then we have negative 2a. So negative 2a is just our constant here, and that's going to equal 1. And if we know these are equal, then we know we don't need a u. So that's going to tell us that a plus b should equal 0. And that also tells us that negative 2a should be our constant, because we want the constants to match up, and this one is 1. So we know that negative 2a should be equal to 1. And now you'll see this system of equations is super easy, right? Because we can solve for a really simply right here. This tells us that a is equal to negative 1 half just by dividing the negative 2 over. And if a is equal to negative 1 half, we know that a plus b is 0. That tells us that b is equal to a positive 1 half because they'll cancel each other out in that way. So now we have this integral in terms of this partial fraction decomp. So we're going to rewrite it as the integral a over u, so that's going to be a negative 1 half times u, so negative 1 over 2u. And then the b is going to be 1 half, so it's 1 over 2 times u minus 2. And this is all with a du. So now we can go ahead and just break this integral up. So we're going to have the integral of negative 1 over 2u du plus the integral of 1 over 2 times u minus 2 du. And these are very simple integrals. You would do these using a u sub. Uh, you can pull the 1 half out of both of these. So if we pull a negative 1 half out here, we're going to get negative 1 half times the integral of 1 over u. But of course, that's going to be negative 1 half times the natural log of the absolute value of u. Same thing here. If we pull out the 1 half and then do a well, it's not a u sub. I said u sub, but it really would be like a w sub, whatever letter you want to use, because we already have it in terms of u. But a substitution will work for these. So we can pull the 1 half, and then we'll get a plus 1 half natural log of the absolute value of u minus 2. And then, of course, we need the plus c because we've integrated. But remember, this is not our answer because we started out in terms of x. So all of these u's need to go back to what we substituted them in for. So what we know is we have negative 1 half, the natural log of the absolute value of u. So it's the absolute value of 2 plus e to the x, but that's always positive, so we don't even need absolute value. So the natural log of 2 plus e to the x plus 1 half times the natural log of the absolute value of, well, we have u minus 2 in there. 
Now, we could, of course, solve for u minus 2 using this, but we already got it right here. So we know that this is going to be the natural log of e to the x. And then we'll have the plus c. And one more thing, the natural log of e to the x, these, of course, are opposite functions, so they're going to cancel out. We'll just get x. So our final answer is going to be negative 1 half the natural log of 2 plus e to the x plus 1 half x plus c. That will be our antiderivative. And again, we're getting that because ln of e to the x is just x, and x times 1 half is going to be 1 half x. And yeah, that's our answer. So it's, it's kind of hard, uh, and I'll, I'll grant that this step right here, changing from this to this is difficult. It's difficult to come up with, and then even when you get there, you may not be confident because you don't, might not think to trade out the e to the x with u minus 2. And then even after that, we still have to go into partial fractions. I mean, it, it's a tough integral. I, I will say it's definitely tough, but it, it's not unreasonable. This is something that, you know, manipulating these integrals is very important. And, and in Calc 2, it's, that's your main goal for the first half of the semester is learning how to do these integrals. So this is a tougher example, but hopefully you were able to get through it. Hopefully you got this answer. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to let me know. I'd be glad to answer what I can. But if you don't have any questions, then I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.